In this video, I'll give you somewhat of an idea for constructing vehicle fighting positions. Uh, these are extremely common, you know, a lot more than you probably think. When you have a mechanized battle, you don't typically just place your vehicles right out in the open for the enemy to see, not even through their uh, thermal sights or IRs or whatever capabilities they have. You dig them in to increase their chances of surviving the battle. Now there's two main types, technically there's three, but there's two main types that you'll see, and that is a turret down and hold down. Now this top one I have here, this is a two-tiered fighting position, and this down here is a one-tier. Now in this one, this front part you see here, that is the that is the hull down fighting position. So the hull itself is below the surface of the ground, and the only thing over the top is the weapon system, the tank turret in this case. Or if it's an infantry fighting vehicle, it'd be the turret on the fighting vehicle. Back here is the turret down. That is where everything is below the surface of the ground, including the turret. So they're not going to be able to fire, put their direct uh, fire straight, straight ahead. If it was an anti-aircraft position, yes, they would be able to fire straight up and off to the sides. Now, typically how this works the reason you do a two-tier like this, and this is actually the most common I've seen put in. They'll have the tank or the fighting vehicle down here. They'll have just above the ground the optics on top. The commander's uh, cameras or scopes or whatever he has up there so he can see what's going on up front. The vehicle is getting uh, loaded. They're loading the main gun, getting ready. On order from the commander, the vehicle moves forward to their little platform here, which would be their hold down part of the hole. They fire, and then if it's a tank, they pull back down into the turret down, reload. Commander finds a new target. They come up, adjust on that target, and fire. And then they just keep repeating the drill. If it's a Bradley or some other infantry fighting vehicle that has an automatic main gun it they'll typically come up to the hold down point and then they'll just keep firing till they get low on ammo and then they'll pull back down into the uh, turret down hole now they do also make them for armored personnel carriers apcs and also wheeled vehicles so down here we got our simulated uh wheeled vehicle with a tow launcher on back. This essentially would be a hold down position. So the only thing that would be above the uh, level of the uh, ground is the launcher and then the person that would be employing it. So they would fire off their uh, weapon, reload quickly, fire it off again. I, They do not have in doctrine putting in a, a turret down type position inside a position for a wheeled vehicle. They just typically recommend doing what essentially is a hull down. Now for some uh, construction points or information, the slopes coming in should be no greater than a 33 degree angle to make it easier for getting in and getting out. The uh, depth, as I said, should be to where it is on the vehicle. So if it's in a uh, hold down position, you just want the depth of this position to the top of the deck of the uh, vehicle. For the turret down position, you want it so that the top of the soil the sides of the position are up over the top of the turret, but hopefully not so much that it blocks off the commander's sights. 
Another thing that I came across is there needs to be uh, three feet of space all the way around the vehicles to include on the sides. It makes it easier for doing maintenance on the vehicle, especially if it uh, took some damage when it pulled up to the hold down position and then pulled back. It can also make it easier if it's some type of APC or a wheeled vehicle to be able to pull out casualties from the vehicle also if you got space around it. Now some general dimensions for US vehicles. For the uh, turret down, it's typically going to be around 3 meters. So 9 to 10 feet. And then the hull down, that's going to depend on the vehicle itself. The Bradley's a little bit taller than an M1, so they'll, they're position here will be down farther than it would be for an M1 and then other types of tanks also so you might have an M60 or an M48 or whatever <clears throat> and that'll be a little bit deeper than it is for the M1 the size or length of uh, the shelf here it should be long enough that the tank can pull up onto it acquire it shot and then pull down easily you shouldn't have a bunch of it overhanging because that could cause a little bit of a rocking effect especially when firing it might toss off your uh, shot and that's basically what all I got on that uh, just for information the third type of position is a hide position and that is would be employed in a uh, three-tiered position potentially so you would have your hull down your turret down and then even lower would be the hide position where everything for sure is below the surface there you know not even the commander's sights are going to be below ground or above the uh, surface of the ground information on constructing these and all that uh, first the very first uh, position that gets done, and this is done with a uh, blade team, so two dig assets, either two dozers or two, two earth movers. The first thing that gets dug is the hold down position. So that way you have at least a uh, fighting position that can be used quickly if the battle starts sooner than you expected. After you get the hold down, that's when you dig down the back of it to get your turret down. The spoil that's brought out typically gets pushed to the sides by the uh, dig assets, by the team. Uh, I did have a list telling me the estimated hours for constructing the positions, but I cannot find it right now. Let me see if I can find the page quick. You're looking for between three to six hours of dig time, depending on the uh, type of fighting position, which depends on the vehicles. It also depends on the uh, blade asset being used. Can you camouflage these positions? Yes, you can. Obviously, your greatest uh, giveaway will be the cut in the ground so you could camouflage it with leaves brush and that type of stuff camouflage the vehicle with netting or do like in Europe start attaching brush to the top of the vehicle and that stuff also you know make it look like it's a big brushy area and that stuff and the only way they'll be able to tell it's a fighting position at that point is kind of a side scan instead of just straight down or straight ahead Now for all my engineer brothers and the Patriot and Militia movements, always remember essayons.